Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, WhatsApp, every social media application you use right now is calling for the head of the Manchester United manager, Eric Ten Hag. How difficult it is to coach this club of ours. Welcome to the Hot Spot, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Webb, and I am here to give you my verdict on the sacking or not of Eric Ten Hag based on his strength and weaknesses. Let's get into it. Now, Eric Ten Hag has caught a, a quite a number of strengths that I think we can all agree uh, led him to guiding Manchester United to a third place finish in his, in his first season in charge of the club. One of the, his biggest strengths we've seen is one, he's ruthless. I think that's the strength because you need it to be able to succeed at Manchester United because of the size of the club. You can't sell ice cream and think you're going to succeed at Manchester United. That ruthlessness is for me part of why or lack of it is part of why David Moyes and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer failed at Manchester United. Yet, I think we would all agree that, as we'll see later in his weaknesses, David Moyes is actually probably a better tactician than Eric Ten Hag. But Moyes did not have the character, the ruthlessness of Eric Ten Hag, which was needed for him to succeed at Manchester United. So that's a big strength. Let's give it to him. And we've seen it already with how he's trying to set standards at the club since he arrived. And he has been consistent. <clears throat> so that's a positive. Number two, Eric Ten Hag is firm. He, what do I mean? He has got quite a character as a manager because it's not easy for you to move from a small club like Ajax, and that was the biggest club he, has, he had managed in his career from Utrecht to Ajax. That's the biggest. And Bayern, where he was an assistant to Pep, Bayern too. So the biggest club he, has, he had managed was Ajax. And we saw that he played good football. But you come from, as a Dutch manager, a young emerging Dutch manager, you come to England, how brutal you know England is. A club like Manchester United in the state he found it, but he's firm enough to come out there and face the tough critics in, in, the, in the British media, the journalists, everyone. Remember there is a whole glaze, uh, takeover situation going on. No one is talking about it from the club. The journalists are asking the manager about the takeover. But he should be focusing on the, on, on the football. So he has, carried, he has shown for me a very respectable character in how he has handled himself. Remember, he's not really English. He's not so, you know, uh, <coughs> you, you are, you, fluent with his English. He had to learn. He has actually improved, if you ask me. So I do love how firm and the, the show of character he has. he has. He has shown, I think, just two seasons into the Premier League, the toughest league in the world and the biggest club in the world. Credit. To him, Eric Ten Hag, those are the two strengths, and there are not so many that we've clearly seen about him. But let's now look at the negatives, because this is where everyone ha now has a problem, and that's why people are calling for his head. There are so many that they sort of cover up the positives, but I'll come back to my verdict after getting into them. Weakness number one is his man management. I think there's a thin line between being ruthless and being a poor man manager. Now, I've just mentioned that ruthlessness, his ruthlessness and his, uh, is, is a positive, is a strength to him. But like I said, when you're over ruthless, you become a bad man manager. So we are still there. Is Eric Ten Hag become a, being a little way too much? And if so, Coming out to the way as he handled, for example, Jadon San Cristiano Ronaldo first. How he handled Cristiano Ronaldo, the biggest player, a role model to more, more than 80% of the current players at Manchester United. You saw Alejandro Ganacho when he scored his bicycle kick, the best goal he will ever score in his career. The celebration that naturally came out of him was the Cristiano Ronaldo celebration. Now that shows you that that boy has idolized Cristiano Ronaldo because in the young career of Alejandro Ganacho, perhaps even in his entire career, he will not, never score a better goal than that. We can perhaps, you know, and I'm not saying he's not good, but what I'm saying is that such a goal is magical. So when you score such a goal at that level, and your first instinct, the celebration is you're celebrating Cristiano Ronaldo, that shows you how much power Ronaldo had over United players when he was in that dressing room with his kids. So the way Eric Ten Hag handled him must have obviously these kids will not lose, choose Ten Hag over Cristiano, their role model in football. So 
the whole th things we are seeing now, the division in the dressing room started way back. These were things that were initiated by Cristiano, perhaps not voluntarily, but by the fact that he was there and Eric Ten Hag treated him the way he did. And Ronaldo went in the media and spoke about Ten Hag when he was still contracted to the club and how it blew up and how later everything Ronaldo said is happening one after the other. Obviously, Cristiano Ronaldo divided the Manchester United dressing room because of how he fell out with the manager. So you're the current manager, but all the kids in the dressing room do not respect you because how you mistreated their role model. You understand what I'm saying? So if you think about all that, that for me, he was ruthless in handling Cristiano Ronaldo, but he was a poor man manager. And that is why he has got problems spilling over now, more than a year since Cristiano left. Rafael Varane obviously is falling out with him because Varane obviously sided with Ronaldo. They won everything together at Real Madrid. You are an upcoming manager. These are big players and they have got a lot of influence on the, on the dressing room. So I think that is one major weakness and that is why we are seeing the shakeup happening now. But bear in mind the positives I told you earlier. This video might be a little longer, but I hope you know it's worth it for you. So that's so it shows that Eric Ten Hag, like Zlatan Ibrahimovic said, is a bit out of his depth, and you would understand it because, like I said, he came from a small club to the biggest club in the world and found it in a crisis. So boo, he was thrown in the deep end right there, but he's trying to manage it. So do you judge him? so much two strength uh, the, the next strength is the tactics clearly we've seen glaring issues with his tactics his substitutions the timing and the choice of players that come on most of the times who he pulls off in games i won't go into the details the rasmus hoyland story we all know we all see they say watch the same game so you know what i'm talking about so his tactics are a weakness they can be questioned and we've got every right to do that but he's a young manager he has got room to improve are the positives too strong? Let's move on. Player selection, of course. And uh, for me, that's quite an, uh, uh, a, a bad issue for me. Uh, he gets a bit, you know, uh, funny with his selection, maybe a, a, a bit sentimental. Maybe there's a bit of favoritism to some of the player, for the player, with the players he signed. So his player selection can be questioned. And because of that, United has been a bit delusional because we've been winning games, beating Brighton and Sheffield, but we're not convincing. So we are delusional. So, so uh, we have got a, a, a you know a delusional outlook, which for me I think is another weakness. There is no identity. So we've got to have an identity. United has got no identity, but that again goes uh, perhaps into the tactics. But maybe performances because it ca just came out in the press, you know, just after the loss to Bournemouth, and he was saying he does not have the quality to be consistent. That's an attack on the players. Already there is a big war between him and the players, and he's making it worse. I feel like he's beginning to do the things Antonio Conte did when he was tired of managing Spurs. He went out in the media and was attacking the club, his own club and players, in the press. That's a sign of a frustrated person. If you are, there are any psychologists here on, or, or watching the video, you can tell us. But clearly, the things Eric Ten Hag is saying now and doing show you that he's frustrated. So there's a war. Clearly, there's no comfort. And you see where it comes from. It's understandable. So can, we, can it be managed and fixed? Again, think about it. Eric Ten Hag, I, I find him a bit rigid. That's the other thing. And maybe that, again, applies to his selections on the pitch, but also maybe his decisions away from the pitch, man management, because you feel like He's so stuck on how he wants things to, to happen. I'll give you an example. The glaring problem United has, and trust me, the next manager will see it, is the playing with one holding midfielder. We, leak, we are way too soft from our, in our core, in the middle. We are too weak in the, in the middle. Eric Ten Hag still insists on playing one holding midfielder. Whereas he pretends to have two, but Scott is not a holding midfielder and he sees it. That's why he puts him there because of his goals, not because of his defensive contributions. But instead of solving that problem, he's too rigid on his approach uh, that I want one, you know, uh, a, a, a singular pivot. He's so, so rigid with it and he's taking too long to adjust. The way he was a bit rigid with 
uh, you know, certain players who are not performing, but he kept doing the same thing. You, you need to be flexible to to be to to, to be to be flexible and do the basics, do the simple things. So his rigidity is making him look like he's too ta technical, uh, like too tactical. He tries to overthink. Then you become a tinker man, and I think it is a, a cultural problem when it comes to the Dutch, uh, you know, managers. They overthink football. The same problem Louis Van Gaal had. He was overly tactical, yet he's a beautiful manager, he's a teacher, but he's overly tactical. Sometimes you don't have to be. So that's the other thing. Uh, uh, but also, his transfers have sold him out because, I mean, with the exception of Casemiro, I'm not uh, 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 sure whether it's 100, it's him who signed him, who made an immediate impact. The rest of his signings have, have been work, and it's been clear. And he has struggled to justify some of the, most of them. And some of them are obvious. How do you sign Mason Mount and you go out in the media and you try to justify why you're signing Mount as your first signing, given the situation you're on? You're trying to improve a team that finished that last season and you bring Mason Mount. You failed even to play him yourself. So you clearly see that his transfers, you know, are not, cannot be trusted, to be honest. They cannot be trusted. So, again, could it be because he's overwhelmed by what he found? He's not focused so much on the football. He has got so much to deal with. Again, that's food for thought. But also, guys, another big problem is the lack of talent. The talent is there, but it's young. But the players he, he inherited, this for me is the worst Manchester United squad post Sir Alex Ferguson. Actually, it is the worst Manchester United squad I have personally seen in my age. This is the worst Manchester United squad. Even if Sir Alex Ferguson was manager of this squad, he would struggle. This squad, this squad is worse than the one that had uh, Phil Jones, I think Stones, and I think that humiliated Arsenal. Man, Sir Alex Ferguson was such a manager. But guys, this for me is the worst squad we've had as Manchester United. So do you blame the manager for failing to, 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 to get you know, performances out of them? Again, food for thought. We've got the wrong players. Any manager who will come will clean. But then the most, the biggest other problem, which is his problem now, because he's the manager and he's definitely having a, a toll on him and the players, is the lack of a structure. Up to now, we are not sure whether Sajim Ratcliffe is in or not. There is no structure at the club. There is confusion in the, at the club. Certainly, it will affect the manager. So, Whereas I've said all these things, all these issues and everything, and here is my verdict. Should we suck Eric Ten Hag or not? I don't think we should be, he should be sucked. But I think it is time for Manchester United and Eric Ten Hag to mutually part ways. Because it cannot work for Ten Hag. Man United is, has, will have to first to change the entire dressing room if he's, they are going to keep Ten Hag. But the damage is even personal. These players don't, most of these players don't, in their hearts, they don't respect him probably. They don't, they don't like him, but also they fear him because he's too ruthless. But this is talent. They, are not, they can't be expressive. A few of them will be, but... The Cristiano Ronaldo thing must have been personal. These are footballers. So for me, I love Ten Hag, but let them not suck him. Let us part ways. Hot spot. Subscribe. My name is Webb.